We're talking today with Rick Allenbach of RPA Engineering. Rick's the president and CEO. Rick, thanks for taking time today. Well, thank you for coming in today to see us. Now, you, we were just chatting a minute ago, and you mentioned that you just moved into this building as of, what, the beginning of the month? Right. Actually, the uh, yeah December 31st, we finalized the, the move in and began opening boxes the first of the year. So. And uh, how did you come to be here? Where were you before and, and why here? Well, we were in a three-part plaza. It was a, a, a medium-sized office building, which we leased for several years. But our ultimate goal was to own the building that we were in. And the other thing we've, I felt that I've noticed over the years of traveling that in, in a lot of uh, cities, there is an engineering firm that has some road visibility of some substance. I kind of like that. There's, a, there's one on the way to Baltimore. I won't mention, mention my competitor's name. There's one that I see. You have to look for it coming in and out of Philadelphia off the Schuylkill. I just thought it has a nice, uh, nice feel. And I thought, gee, if we could find a building that fit our style and still had that, that marketability, highway visibility, it would be great for us. How long did you have to look to find this place? I think we... I think we were looking off and on for about two years, and uh, and we were seriously looking for a building for a year, and uh, stumbled upon this through uh, another business associate of ours. So it's very 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 fortunate for us. Um, tell me what you do. It's engineering, and you you on your website you have you have a couple of core areas that you work in. What are those? Yes, we I describe our services as that we have all the engineering disciplines represented, and that means electrical, mechanical, structural, process, control, civil. So we have all the all the types of engineering, but we focus in several key business sectors. The first being we describe as pharmaceutical, and for us, it's uh, pharmaceutical research and development, some biologics, and some manufacturing in the pharmaceutical industry. So that's. It's a key business sector we work in. The second we describe as industrial, and we work for uh, several major corporations. Fortunately for us, one of our key clients is Carpenter, so we have a, a strong experience and background in premium melting industry, and it goes beyond Carpenter to some other industries, and even some other metals like Alcoa and for Cabot. How important is having that one or two kind of key clients uh, in in those those core areas, well, as I mentioned about Carpenter, we also have GlaxoSmithKline as our anchor client in the pharmaceutical arena. I, it's it's uh, it's it's a mixed uh, it's a blessing and sometimes it's a liability. We're very very pleased to have those clients and all our clients, especially our key large clients. But what happens is when we turn a major attention and focus on those few key clients, as all business. Uh, 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 sectors go. They, they have high points and low points and if they're your only clients you'll suffer when they're suffering and that sometimes makes it a little bit difficult. But we we've, we've always have worked hard to, to, to give them the best service that we can and at the same time to be looking and pursuing a more diversified uh, client base and, and we're, we're somewhat uh, successful at doing that continually. Is part of that uh, effort to diversify, being uh, aware of where new opportunities are and, and what, in your view, are, are sectors that offer opportunities for growth? Well, it, it's a combination of just where, where our commonly established sectors are and a matchup of our own skill set and also what we, what we like to do. I describe our, number, our ideal client as a client that has at least a billion dollars worth of sales has a constant need of engineering services and spends a good portion of that of their engineering services, acquires them on the outside. So once I establish that's an ideal client, then we begin to look at what are those ideal clients within our geographic uh, range and, uh, and then also look at when they are in a position of, uh, of growth and, and, begin, and begin to try to nestle up to them at that point. As we're sitting here talking, I can I can look over your shoulder and see you've got you've got uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War. <laughs> right. Now is that is that decoration or are, are you a, a a reader of that kind of material? What do you what kind what do you get out of that? Yeah, what's well, yeah I, yes I I'm a constant I, I do have an MBA and I'm and uh, I like to think I'm a, a reader and I'm always in constant 
uh, pursuit of learning uh, things I think will help improve me personally as well as help me improve in running the business. So I'm in a couple of organizations, Vistage and Coach, strategic coach that, that exposed me to a lot of current uh, books and, and articles and, and theories and strat current Vogue strategies. But uh, along those lines, I, I, I came to understand that uh, the art of war and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, other books were actually used for years in the academies, like at West Point, for instance. And when I, when I, when I recognized the, the time-proven uh, value of those readings, I began to explore those also. And I do refer back to it as, uh, especially when I'm thinking about a particular situation and, and looking for what I think is a, pot, a good strategy in order to deal with it. So I will refer to that. Ken, do you, do you have a specific instance where something you read in uh, Art of War uh, related to a, a particular instance of, of work, of leadership? Yeah, well, it's more like marketing strategy, I would say, more than leadership. It okay. first comes to mind. I'm probably not, you know, not going to address it properly. But if, if there were things about about well, well, there's, there's probably one that's common. It says that the battle, the battle, when you're in the battle, which in this case could be uh, trying trying to win a new client or your project, is won before the process ever begins. So before the combat ever begins, the battle's already won. And what what they're what's defining in there is your preparation for it, the strategy, the timing of when you pick to do what you do. That sets the stage for your success. That's not how strong you are, and actually in the heat of the engagement sometimes. Right. So that that's a key element that I, one I can refer to back. In the Underscores course. the importance of preparation and, exactly. and thinking strategically. Exactly. So that I, I use that to sort of help me through some of those moments. Have you um, found any new work in uh, natural gas? I think we're one of the. Uh, it, 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 the direct question answer to that is no. Uh, not that we're not going to go after it. We. Uh, probably one of the few firms that, with the Marcella Shale, did not really turn and focus on that, particularly. Uh, probably for a couple of reasons. My first assessment is what our core abilities are here are not, uh, or not related to gas exploration, et cetera, or, or some of the civil uh, land uh, licensing and, and permits required. That's not our core business. and. Uh, and I, I just uh, it, we, we just didn't we just didn't follow that. Our, our my position was, if if and when that begins to materialize, which it is, that there'll be a secondary market of transportation, uh, of of the fuel and all sorts of other aspects of it that we'll be able to capitalize on then. Something that'll play more into your what you right. do well. What we do well, right? Now I say that, and, and, and at the same moment, next week I'm flying to Houston. We've been invited to make a presentation to a major firm, piping firm in the oil and gas industry, but they invited us, so I'm not sure. So maybe I'll be saying something different if I come back from Houston as it relates to, to that. So. Sounds like you do work all over the country? We, we, we define it as eastern half of the United States. We, we've done work you know, all the way to you know, the shores of California. We've done some work overseas, but generally that work is, is originates by our clients taking us to their particular locations, as opposed to us winning work in that new location right. independently. Uh, how many offices do you have? Well, we have uh, we have uh, an office in Western Pennsylvania. We had one in Grove City and, well, say in downtown Pittsburgh, which we're combining to one Pittsburgh office, which will be located near the airport. Is located near the airport. We have that. We have an office in Valley Forge. And then we have a satellite office, as we affectionately describe it, in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, in Venice, Florida. Um, and if you, uh, okay, so you, you kind of admit intentionally passed on natural gas. Where, what do you see the next kind of wave for, for uh, a growth sector being? Well, I'm not sure that it's clear in my mind. But I, I, it's more an arena. I think that uh, for us, it is it's still right now manufacturing. The industrial sector is fairly strong, and pharmaceutical and biologics are also strong. They, they're 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 not the growth that they were, you know, a decade ago, but they're fairly strong. So in even those markets, as long as they hold uh, constant, we as a firm are climbing what I call the uh, the ladder of uh, uh, sophistication and complexity in the work that we do. 
So we see still growth in the sectors we're operating, but we're beginning to take a broader geographic penetration of that market, as well as the level of sophistication of the types of work that we're given, both in process and, and production. Well, that sounds like a good place to end on. Rick, <laughs> okay. Rick, thanks for the time today. All right, thank you very much. I certainly appreciate it.